And we are back, folks. Another edition of the Michigan Insider Film Breakdown, breaking down the defense from Michigan's 32 to 29 road victory over the Nebraska Cornhuskers, Michigan 6 and 0 heading into the bye week. Joining me as he does every week to break down the defense, former Michigan assistant, multiple time defensive coordinator across college football, and a former NFL coach, too. None other than Vance Befford. Vance, how you doing, man? I'm doing outstanding, living here in Loveland, Colorado, and a little uh, snow on the ground already, brother, so it's beautiful outside. <laughs> Go it, it. You know what? It was it was beautiful to hear your breakdown be so spot on, not because I wanted to see uh, the issues manifest, right, but because it really illustrated how dialed in you are to the things that Michigan does well and the things that they need to work on. Uh, you talked about the things they need to work on heading into this game, and those were the things that you know Nebraska kind of exploited a little bit in the second half after Michigan just flat out got out the gate dominating in the first half. I mean, Nebraska couldn't do it, couldn't do a thing in the first half there, Vance. And they really couldn't. Uh, you know, again, I, I give my my hat is off to the DC. He does a tremendous job breaking the guys down, being aggressive. You know, the biggest thing I've seen so far this year is a couple of times in the second half where the offense is making the adjustments and the defense isn't. So we struggled a little bit in the second half. The things we talked about, formation adjustments, motions, options. Nebraska took advantage of those situations and had some success in the second half. Now, middle way through the season, there are times where the defense had to pick up the offense. I mean, make no mistake, we've seen it a number of times, right? But – Second half of this game, the offense had to come through. And you said, hey, you know, the offense picked them up some in this game. They really did. I thought the quarterback, in my opinion, from a defensive standpoint, had his best game of the year. I thought from the win this game, the quarterback had to do some things well. He did. I heard he might have missed some plays, but that's okay. He made some crucial plays at crucial times. And in my opinion, that's the difference in the ball game was his performance this game. Let's start off with that first half, Vance, because there was a sequence when – Nebraska gets down in the red zone. They're trying to punch it in. And you've been talking about a young fella on Michigan's defense uh, along the defensive line. That's key. He keeps flashing in games, Vance. And I'm talking about young number 94, Chris Jenkins. Yeah. Now, this is a defensive lineman that was a – he was an end in high school, you know, around 240 pounds. He's put on some, some mass since he's been at Michigan, and you can definitely see the strength there, Vance. Well, to me, he hasn't flashed for me. He's been playing good football the entire year. I mean, we, we keep talking about our defensive end play, but those guys in the interior, no one has actually run the football on us this entire year inside. And if you can control the line of scrimmage with those two guys inside, look out, because I think the defense can continue to carry the football team and win some ball games. And the offense each week has gotten better and better and better. So I'm excited for this football team. I'm going back to what I said to the fans and the stands. Get out them seats and start cheering these boys on. I told you from the first game of the year, these boys are ready to play. Go blue. That's right. <laughs> All right. So I want to bring this up. And so this is where we see number 94. Oh, my goodness. Man, he, he punched that guy like he was mad at somebody. He knocked him straight back, stood him up. You can look, He's taking on a double team. That's outstanding. So now your linebackers are free to the football. And if he can do that throughout the year, you have two first-team all-conference linebackers because he actually makes his play. He doesn't necessarily get a statistic, but he makes the play because he destroys the offensive line. And this is outstanding football play by the Michigan defensive Ooh. line. And my hat's off to the defensive line coach. Oh, my goodness. That's embarrassing. If I was that kid, the offensive line, I wouldn't even go to the sideline. I'd go straight <laughs> into the doggone locker room and have some Gatorade as the second half started. <laughs> wow. He took him to the woodshed, and he's still taking him. He, 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 he flew all the way back to Ann Arbor, probably still spanking him. Wow, what a play. <laughs> that young fella. And see, you were looking for not only some starters to really emerge as playmakers, right? So Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton have been playing good football. But those guys, I mean, Vance, you coach defenses. Those big fellas, they can't play. Every snap, you got to rotate those guys in, and you want to be able to do it without any drop off. And that's for the most part what Michigan's been able to do this year. You know, I've been watching Alabama and Georgia for the past five years. When you watch those teams play, they don't play just four guys up front, 
they rotate a bunch of people in because in the fourth quarter, your best players need to be fresh. You can't play a, a defensive lineman 300 pounds 75 plays a game. And right now, what you're seeing in Michigan defense, they are building depth. So if a guy goes down, there's not much drop, drop off. So if we can continue to do that till we get ready to play the big boys, again, I'm excited about this defense and this football team right now. All right, so Vance, they decide that, hey, you know what? We plan to win this game. We 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 got to get on the board. We we need to punch it in for a touchdown, right? And so there was a quarterback run play against Michigan State. Vance, when I say they walked in the end, Adrian Martinez walked in the end zone, he walked in the end zone. From the three, Martinez, option, wide open, touchdown, Nebraska. His second rushing score tonight. Block. Chancellor Brewington in motion. On Petrovsky, let me get you to the end zone, Adrian. And they came out with that play against Michigan, and it was not the same scenario. It was not the same scenario at all, Vance. I'm going to bring it up here and put it on the screen because I reacted to this play, and you absolutely did too. This was one that had you fired up, Mr. Vance Befford. So I'm going to bring it up right here, right now. And what I want to point the attention to here at the very onset, Vance, and before you take it away, is what we see right here with Mike Morris. Look at how he's looking out this way, Vance. Looking for the crack, Coach. Looking for the crack. That reminds me of a play two games ago when Aiden did the same thing. Look for the crack. Get over the top. He makes the ball go deeper. And now it cleans it up for the next guy. That is outstanding football play, great awareness, but also outstanding coaches to alert the players on what's going to happen. Again, I'm seeing smart football played by the Michigan defensive line, and I have to get my hats off to the coaches preparing these guys for these type of plays. This is an outstanding play by him. Yeah, he he didn't make – this is another one of those examples where he doesn't make the play, but he sees the crack coming, gets rid That's of it, strings it out just enough. To me, he doesn't get a stat for this play, but he makes the play. If he doesn't do that, this is going to be a touchdown. This is going to be a touchdown because now it's a no play because of what he does. He buys time for other guys to go off a block. That's called team defense there. Yeah, man, that's that's big time stuff. And it was like that. It was like that the whole first half, fans. You know, we, we see these guys making plays, and a guy that you've been raving about, another guy you've been raving about all season, is number 30, <laughs> Dax, yes, Hill. Dax. Da- Dax Hill continues to look like the pro that I think, and this was a tremendous individual play, fans. I mean, I was like, man, this this is this a guy Vance Bedford wants to coach right here. Yes, it is. Rid of the mute there. What you see is great. He's from a nickel back position. He keys the quarterback, great break on the ball. He tips the ball up to himself. What an outstanding individual player. But again, a smart football player. As you look at this young man, he can play several positions, corner, nickelback, safety. You like those type of players as a pro coach. This is a great view right here. Again, he's reading the quarterback's eyes, undercuts the receiver, tips the ball up to himself. You can't ask for anything more than that. That's called great concentration. I mean, we need to see more plays like that from other players in the secondary right now as we get ready to make a big run in the conference. Yeah, I mean, so much responsibility put on his shoulders. He is big in run support. He's big in their blitz game. And then you can you can put him in man-to-man on I mean, that's the toughest. <laughs> Look, man, you know, covering that slot, guys can get a two-way go. I mean, you, you got to be able to deal with quickness. You got to have speed. You got to have some strength. You got to have all the tools to be able to cover over that slot there, Vance. They really do. They're asking Dax to do a lot of things in their defense. And so far, he's done a tremendous job. But, again, you have to have some awareness. Look at his eyes, Kenny, quarterback. Watch the break on the ball. His hands, thumbs together as he's on the ground. Watch him concentrate on the ball coming down. What a great play. Man. <laughs> yeah. So, it's – I mean, you're seeing – plays like that and i remember thinking at the break man hey i wonder what they're gonna i wonder what they're gonna come up with 
in order to get some things going offensively because the quarterback, he, he, him running the ball is a no-go. Uh, right now, you're thinking he's going to have a tough time passing the ball. I got to give the dude credit, Vance. He, he found some things in the second half of this game throwing the football that opened up the run game. And those things that he found were based on, as we talked about at the intro, based on some vulnerabilities that you said Michigan has shown in their defense. So sort of rehash for the people. What are the things that you've seen bother Michigan this season, bother Michigan heading into this game? Unbalanced formations, bunch formations, motion. All the things we talked about from the first three ball games, you saw all of those things in this particular game, and we actually struggled at those situations. I thought they were going to be well covered and adjusted, but again, Nebraska had a lot of trick plays, a lot of throwback play plays, and with all the different formations at times, Michigan looked confused. So it was a great second half adjustment by Scott Frost and his staff that got him back in the ball game. Yeah, in a big way. I mean, they even got to the point where they they had a lead in this game. Uh, but you let's start off first talking about bunch. Talking about Ooh. bunch, uh, Vance. Uh, this was one in the in the first quarter that sort of set up an opportunity for them. That you know, this was this was maybe something they looked at at halftime and said, "Wait a minute, hey guys, this is this is what we can do. We need to do more of this, Vance." I'm gonna bring this up for you. All right. Because this is crucial. This is a fourth down and six situation. And if I'm Scott Frost, I'm thinking in fourth down and medium, third down and medium, they are pressure man-to-man team. So this is a great call. You know, they're going to motion a bunch. We get over late playing man-to-man. Now, the guy on the point, and that's Dax, he needs to be aggressive. We we gave up a touchdown. I think it might have been Rutgers. I'm not sure in a bunch of formation where the guy wasn't aggressive. So, Dax on the point has to be aggressive on the guy on the line of scrimmage. In this particular situation, he wasn't. He gets picked. And he gives up a big play on fourth down and six for a first down. So here we go with the telestration. We're playing man to man. It's three on three. Mm-hmm. The quarterback is reading uh, middle field close. I mean, there's a post state. They're playing man to man. And here comes the pick. They pick Dax, he plays soft, and the guy on the point basically runs a wheel go route. And he's wide open for a first down on fourth and six. But again, Dax, instead of being aggressive, he plays soft, he gets picked, guy's wide open for a first down to keep a drive alive. And these are situations they've had problems with in the past is bunch formation. Mm-hmm. It's a great look right here. And that's really on Dax in this particular situation. It's a great scheme by Nebraska. But to adjust that, the guy on the point, Dax should be aggressive. Go and get the guy on the point. He has a chance now not to get picked. Or he's going to get a flag thrown on them for an illegal pick. All right. So, so Vance, you you talked about motion and formation uh, kind of getting them. There was, a, there was a play in there that it was – I think a part of it was the cleverness of – Nebraska. I mean, it, it looked like they were uh, looked like they were a little disorganized, like they were, you know, they were a little late getting lined up, like they were in trouble a little bit. And that wasn't really the case. I think maybe they were doing a late clock sort of lineup to kind of get Michigan, get Michigan out of sorts a little bit there. And they wound up scoring a touchdown on the play where Michigan wasn't even lined up yet. Okay. That where we at? Um, Ramir Johnson, first half, final drive, first half. Ed, all right, here we go. Here we go. So I'm gonna put this one on the screen here, Vance, for you to react to. You gonna call this part two? Um, 
Where is that play where he scores that touchdown? I got it in here. No, I got it in here. Here it is. Lined up late. This is it. All right, let me share this. Okay. And you can uh so Vance, this is an example of sort of what you were talking about when you said, hey, you know, formation will we'll get you. They there was a little confusion here, but I think some of the confusion had to do with the fact that you know they they got lined up late. This is a big problem. You're trying to run them on later like after timeout because you got motion and you're actually in another bunch formation. So you have four guys who run out there on three guys, so there's nobody left for the quarterback. So I think the linebacker should have stayed inside, but again, you get lined up late, the motion, a lot of things happening at one time, so there's a lot of confusion going on right now. You see guys coming out late, not sure who they're supposed to cover, not communicating right now. There's nobody left for the quarterback, touchdown. So a lot of the focus and attention went towards Aiden Hutchinson, but that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you have way, you have more guys out there. Either way, you have four receivers or four DBs out there covering three receivers. You really do. You you have one, two men out there. And, and again, they're not sure who has whom at this time. And that's part of the problem trying to get lined up. And then the next thing is your linebacker. Somebody should have been on the quarterback. But again, they have bear defense. This is an option is a great call, a quarterback keep versus a bear defense. And it's about execution right now. And again, you got the dive. Number 11, technically, is like the pitch guy. You got option. So you got dive, quarterback. Number 11, the pitch guy, like the old wishbone football is. So again, it's about assignment football in this particular situation. If you ask me right now, I would say number two, the way he was looking back inside, was a guy that might have should have stayed for the quarterback. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. But, hey, what we do know is they have four guys out there on three receivers. It was, they, they had one man too many out there. We know that. They were in man free or zero coverage, so right now they got one guy too many out there. That's exactly right. Yeah, so uh, just one of those things, man, you, you do give the other guys, uh, you know, the guys calling the play some credit at the same time from a coaching perspective, as you talk about with, with Michigan, this was maybe a, a, a sign or a, a symbol, a pattern when it comes to dealing with a bunch of formation and getting lined up, lined up correctly, which is why you talk, you point to the bye week. This gives them plenty of opportunity to work on that kind of thing, right? It really does. They're going to see more of this. Maybe not the option, but they're going to see bunch. They're going to see motion. They're going to see unbalanced formations, things they've had problems with. And you need to get ready for that, especially getting to your conference play because you have Michigan State down the line, Ohio State. You still have, I don't know if they play Penn State or Iowa, but they're going to play one of those teams. And those are the things you're going to see. Everybody's looking at what just happened in this ball game, And they're going to put in one or two of those plays if it fits into their philosophy. So if that's the case, you got to get ready to defend these formation and plays, especially a bunch. Anybody who throws a football, you're going to get a bunch formation. So, so far this year, in every single ball game, Michigan has struggled versus a bunch formation, whether they're playing man or zone. Right. So I wanted to bring this play up because you got excited about this play, Vance. You said this is this is Michigan defense right here. This, this is Michigan defense all the way. Great pursuit. Guys 10 up on the football. This is going to be – it's an RPR, really. They playing man-to-man -man again. The corners do a great job in, in denying the receivers and release. And you're going to see the linebackers, the secondary right to the football, fake dive, number five, bubble. But to me, number four, watch, watch his eyes. He stayed on his coverage all the way. Look at this. Great tackle. If he'd have missed the play, 12 is there, 6 is there. Guys running inside out to the football. To me, this is Michigan defense. This is great execution, great pursuit. This is what I love to see. And this is how Michigan's played the entire season. I'm looking forward to watching them play every single week. Yeah, this was this was a great play by, by Vince Gray. Oh, this, this is a great play. Here. Guys, this is man to man. His guy was in the motion. He never took his eyes off his receiver. He went back. He was a pitch guy. He was in great position, great tackling position. What a great – this is a great job, guys. This is how it should look every single play. Great execution. Guys running to the ball inside and out. You can see the play developing here. This is winning football right here. This is why Michigan won the game, because of plays like these. 
That is a great tackle. Yeah, that's the, we we've seen him come up and stick like that. And I think that's the the strength of this of this secondary is their tackling ability. They they've done a great job right now. Uh, you know what's interesting about this play? I mean, as I look at it, I think I got more excited about that play than the players did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the guys get hyped. I mean, I'm looking for guys to get hyped about making plays that way, but to them, they sort of like mm, it's normal. We're supposed to do this. We, we've been here before. So I'm a typical right. fan right now. <laughs> right. All right. So I believe I want to say it was the next play, uh, Vance. Uh, it wasn't long after that that they, uh, you know, they they got a, a tight end running wide open down the middle of the field. Uh, that that hard run action. I mean, you know, Michigan was doing such a good job against the run. You felt like that aggression was going to leave them a little vulnerable. And you pointed out on this particular play, uh, while we thought it was the linebackers, lie, this is where the coaching eye comes in from, from Vance Beffer. He said, no, no, no. This is not necessarily the linebackers that are most at fault here. Like, you know, you, you, you got to look at what the coverage call is on this play. So I'll bring it up now, Vance, and you can, you can talk us through this tight end. I called it a pop pass, but you can talk us through uh, what what transpired on this play? First of all, I it's an illegal we, we formation. Called it, we called yeah. it illegal formation is yeah. what we called it. Yeah, this is a legal formation. That's the first thing. Hey, they, they have five guys in the backfield, as you guys can see. You can count to five, you got a chance. Okay, now <laughs> I look this. So, now we're highlighting the linebackers in the secondary. So they have checked to a zone. They have five guys over here. Okay, the tight ends and is eligible, but number two, the second guy. That's number two. He cannot go out for a pass. He really can't. So as we look at the highlight for the linebacks in the secondary, the backside corner to the boundary, he's responsible for number one. His number one, as we count, is a tight end. Right now, he's out there covering nobody. The old adage is, man, go find some work. He's out there killing grass right now. I can get a cow to get out there, stand out there and step up and do nothing. That's what he's doing right now. So he should keep that guy. And he should be closer to the hash mark because there's no receivers out there. And it's tough for him to get a run play back to him because the back is deeper than the quarterback. So he really has no run to his side. So his threat should be either half field or deep third. And he should defend that hash mark. So let's see what happens right here. They're going to go play action pass. The linebacker is going to step up to stop the run, which I know the linebacker, coach told the linebacker, oh, that's your coverage. Well, you know what? I've been co coached 30 years. He hasn't covered that play yet. So the backside <laughs> corner, to, in my opinion, he's the guy that has to make the play. I can have a linebacker coach right now. He should have cut the guy this and that. 30 years of coaching, I've heard that before, and it hadn't happened in 30 years. So as I watched number four, he should have moved closer to the hash mark. His eyes in the backfield. He should have defended that hash mark, in my honest opinion, if they play in zone. So to me, as a secondary coach and defensive coordinator, I'm going to put that on him. But again, I can promise you that kid hadn't seen that formation or that play. So this is going to be a great week and an open week to work on strange formations, alignments, and assignments. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so Vance, again, in, in keeping with this theme of they, they found some, they found some tendencies for, for Michigan. You, you made the, the comment before the Wisconsin game that you thought Wisconsin was going to do some of the things you're talking about. And Wisconsin did none of that, right? They did none of it. I was shocked because Rutgers had success in unbalanced formation. So I thought that Wisconsin would show up and do that, but maybe they didn't watch the Rutgers play. I have no idea what the offensive coaches saw. Scott Frost saw these things and he took advantage of these things. And I think you're going to see more and more people give them different formations the rest of the year to slow down all the pressures that they bring on defense. Cause we saw this in the, fourth quarter he didn't pressure as much he was worried about the option he was worried about bunch formation he was worried about unbalanced formation so they started playing a little bit more zone and were, was less aggressive in this play call all right so then there was the bubble wheel uh, and you know michigan ran one of these michigan ran a little bubble wheel too uh vance and they they hit theirs i, I wonder if they i can't remember who did it first in the game, but I wonder if they said, "What of them said, hey, man, we're going to run that play. Because so they, they, they both hit it. They both hit it big. So, again, you got bunch formation again, guys. Another bunch formation. Again, they playing man-to-man. -man. So, 
I hate to say it, but man number four playing with bad eyes. Again, he's watching, he's gonna watch the quarterbacks that are watching this guy. So we're gonna get short motion. And the guy's gonna come back and run a wheel for a touchdown. Because my man number four has his eyes again in the backfield. And this is a touchdown. This is one-on-one, -on -one, man to man. No attitude. Let's tell guys, my man, go to the restroom. You be there waiting for him to come out to say, wash your hands. So we got COVID-19 out there. And here we go for a touchdown up the sideline. His eyes in the backfield. And this again, this is a great wait, wait, call. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> What's up, dog? What's up, man? You said you got COVID-19 out there. <laughs> <laughs> I said, yeah, man, go to the restroom, be out there with the soap so man can wash his ass because COVID-19 out there. This is a touchdown. <laughs> so his eyes in the wrong spot. All right, I'm sorry. Let me let me rewind it. Let me let me rewind it because I got a little distracted there. All right, go ahead, man. Start off. So again, he's man to man. His eyes, he took his eyes off the class. He looked in the backfield, a guy reversed his course. And again, this it, is just assignment this is just being lazy with your eyes and you can get this corrected because remember we just saw a previous play that's very similar where he made the open field tackle he was focused on his guy this time his eyes are off the prize and this is for a touchdown against a great scheme don't get me wrong great scheme by scott frost and offensive staff and again just it's poor assignment and eyes by us on defense right now mm -hmm. and but again you saw at the end of the day, and I said this to you before, I mean, we've seen this defense in games where uh, the, the couple games where you saw the offense, well, no, even against Wisconsin, where, you know, Wisconsin has some success toward the end of the half, right? Mm -hmm. Defense came out, made some clutch plays early. Rutgers was, was pushing them around all second half. They made those clutch plays at the end, yeah. right after the offense has some momentum. And in this game, Vance, I, I know you as a secondary coach, you, you had to do your heart proud. You had to be like, man, I, Mr. Hawkins is my guy. Because he came through in a big moment to make, I mean, the, the play of the game, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know about you. I thought the, the, the fumble by, the, the cause fumble by by Brad Hawkins was the, was the play of the day, the play of the game. That was a great strip. I mean, again, the defense is a ball hawking defense, and they are constantly trying to get takeaways for the defense. And it was a big time play. I've been very impressed with the things they've done so far. I mean, look at all the guys on right, the ball man. now. It is. That's, this is a great strip. This is a great job. But the entire defense, you see the entire guys around the ball, not one, but three, four, and five guys. So you got an opportunity for guys to get a strip. Watch this play. The D-line does a great job in winning a line of scrimmage. Great fit by the linebackers. And he comes in there and just yanks it out. That's a nice job. That is a nice football play. And then they celebrate as a team, which I love. Yeah, you talk about winning football plays, Vance. I mean, they, they needed it. They, they had some momentum offensively that they had established. So you... You need a play, someone to step up and make a play in the worst way. And it happens to be, you know, the, the oldest guy, the most veteran guy on the team that stepped up and did it. You know, the best thing about the guys on defense right now, they never panic. You think about, about that? They never panic. They play with great emotion, but emotion is under control. And by doing that, I'm going to make it. You're going to make it. Please come my way. That's the attitude they have right now is that I hope you come my way because if you do, you're going to pay a price. And that's winning football right now. That's why they're playing great defense, because guys are not afraid to make plays. All right, so, Vance, bye week now. Make make the adjustments for me. Talk. I mean, we're we're lay people, we're, or, or we're the players. You step into the meeting room. You tell us what our focus is going to be during the bye week before we start. Next week is when we start preparing for Northwestern. This week I'm is going, when we work on us, what we're working on. I'm going back to the old adage, can you count to three? If you count to three, you can play for me. So I'm going through all different formations. And from bunch formations to unbalanced formations to illegal formation, Nebraska had four touchdowns. And like I said, if I'm a corner, I can count to one. If I'm playing zone, they got five guys on one side. And the first guy that's close to the line of scrimmage, technically, that's my coverage. So no matter what formation you come out in, you can count to three. You can get a line. Now you can adjust to anything they do. The next thing is I'm working on motion. I'm working on motion. Who has motion? Can I count to that guy? Can we pass this off? Those type of things. But otherwise than that, they're doing a great job. 
And you can't be afraid to stop pressuring guys when you give up a play. Because I saw in the second half, he backed away from things. He was concerned about option, motion, and bunch. But I'm an old guy. If you get a play on me, the next play, I'm coming after you again. It makes no difference. I'll let you know right now, we're coming out of the garage, throwing the kitchen sink, wrenches, everything at you, and I'm not going to stop. And, and are, I think it's continuing to do that. Are you – does it change your mentality some if you're – if, A, you're like, man – I don't know if we could trade. I don't know if our offense can put up enough. If they score, I don't know if we're going to be able to respond. But once once you see your offense do that, does that that does that allow you to be more aggressive? Does that affect your mindset at all as a as a defense no. coordinator? Does that not no, play no. into? It? My philosophy is that I'm a pressure guy. It has nothing to do with the offense. It has okay. to do with who I am and who the defense is. So we're stepping off the bus. I'm throwing things after. It makes no difference. If you hit a play, I'm still coming back. Well, I got a story for you. We're playing. The year West Virginia beat uh, Oklahoma in the Orange Bowl for 70 points on them. We beat West Virginia in West Virginia. I blessed in the first 10 plays. I didn't care. They hit a touchdown on play three. I came back the next four, five, six, seven. I mean, I'm throwing George Foreman, overhand right, Mike Tyson jab. It made no difference. That's who we were. And you know what the players always told me? Say, Coach, whatever you do, don't stop blitzing. And that's my, my, my point to them. If you're a pressure team, don't stop blitzing. Keep doing the, what makes the players great. And what's making the players great on defense this year is the aggressive attitude of the defensive staff. So if they hit a play, so what? Let's come back the next play, let's blitz again. Because that's who you are. And that's why you're having success on defense right now. Yeah, man. And, and it also helps that they are, from a, from a um, front four standpoint, I mean, now it's starting to be more than just a you, – you pointed out a couple of plays in the run game. We can close on this. You talk about a couple of plays in the run game. Chris Jenkins made one. Mike Morris made, made one. We've been seeing all season long. Mozzie Smith and Chris Hinton make plays. But, man, this dude, David Ajabo Vance, I, I mean, he he's starting to flash in an every game on an every game basis. Here, Aiden flushes the, uh, Adrian Martinez up in the pocket. And Dave Ajabo, I, I don't know how Adrian Martinez held on to this ball. Well, I tell you what, people are starting to worry a lot about Aiden, but right now, your boy, he's playing just as well. I mean, trying to block these two defensive ends one-on-one, -on -one, I mean, you're asking for trouble. So if you're going to try to turn your protection to block Aiden, then your tackle got to be a man backside. And so far in the last two ball games. He's look at that play right there. He's made some crucial sacks and caused fumble because he's winning this battle one on one. So if you right. know what happens? You have a great player on one side. It makes everybody else around him step up and play great, also. And this was a great shot. And I gotta, I gotta thank my man that that sends us some of these clips, some of these footage, some of this footage from multiple vantage points because you really get to see, uh, you know, what's going on up close and personally on a play like that. I don't know how Adrian Martinez held on to that football. That I don't either, but, but you know what's really good about that play? He's talking about I was that close with getting that strip. So every single play, those guys are going to make plays. And that's what Michigan's defense is all about. We are going to make play every single time we get out to the football. And if they continue to do that, they're going to get a lot of takeaways during the season, put the offense in short fields. They should win a lot of ball games because of that. Here's your biggest question, Mark in the second half of the season and what are you most excited about in the second half? Biggest question mark and what you most excited about? My biggest question mark is can we hold up in the secondary by rushing four guys? That's number one. But my excitement is about keep blitzing coach, let's get quarterback sacks, let's make the quarterback run for his life and throw us a football, put the offense in a short field position. And I'm looking forward to seeing it because I think he's going to dial up some pressures and we're going to get a lot of takeaways that people are not going to worry about it. And so I'm looking forward to watching this defense get after people the rest of the season. I, I'm going to put pressure on the man. We're going to go into Ohio State game, last game of the year, undefeated. We're going to be in the top 10. I don't care what we play, Columbus and Auburn, or we can just play on State Street. It doesn't matter. Lock and load, baby, because we're coming to get you. That's all I got to tell you. Go blue. I can't wait. I'm going to find me some old Michigan stuff, put it on. I'm going to find me a helmet. I'll be sitting in front of my TV. Let's ride, baby. There's no gold pants for the Buckeyes this year. We bring this thing back to Ann Arbor. Let's go, baby. 
Yeah, you put pressure on the fans. But I love it. I love that about you, fans. I love it. So, no, nah, they're looking forward to that game. We all are. But the next game that we talk about will be after the Northwestern game. No breakdown next week because of the bye week. So we'll see you in two weeks here on the Michigan Insider Breakdown, focused on the defense with Vance Bethel. Keep it rolling, baby. Go Blue. Thank <laughs> you.